Today, Locked On Hawkeyes, it's a look towards the future. We welcome in our in our analysts on the scouting side of things. With football recruiting, Bryant Smith is going to join us. We talk about the class of 2025 and the changing landscape, maybe, of Iowa football on the offensive side. We do it all today, Locked On Hawkeyes. You are Locked On Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon. I'm joined today by Brian Smith, and this is the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you find podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today. And you'll get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We get started today with some football talk as we welcome in Brian Smith, our analyst presented by LinkedIn. And Brian, good to catch up again. It's been a while since we talked last. I was got a new offensive coordinator. They got a new wide receiver coach. They got some commits for the class of 2025. How are things down in Florida? Uh, it's it's going well. Uh, everything down here is a little warmer than where you're at. So uh, life is better in that regard. But I am happy to see Iowa finally make some changes for the love of mankind and all things holy. It, it was it was time. So uh, hopefully for Iowa fans, it gives them more to talk about. And that's what we're here to do as well. Well, and we got warmth here. I mean, we should be starting spring football right now with 64 degrees, at least where I sit. In, in really? Yeah. We got that's a heat wild. wave coming through here. So uh, we're, we're doing well, but we're still a month away from spring football. And it's been interesting. Tim Lester gets hired as the offensive coordinator. And for a while, it felt like it was down to a final two. After Paul Chris was kind of the odds on favorite initially, that didn't come to fruition for whatever reason. It got down to Kevin Johns, a name I'm sure you remember from the past. He's been kind of all over the place as a coordinator, and Tim Lester. And at the time, the flavor of the day, it felt like it was Johns. And the reason that I was a bigger proponent of him is because he'd done it in a couple of different systems, he did it a couple of different ways. And he had real offensive coordinator experience in multitude of levels. But I'll be honest, Tim Lester, I wasn't happy initially. I listened to him, did a little bit more research, and I'm fine. But the big caveat, Brian, and you know this, you got to be fine with it. But regardless of who the coach is, Kirk Ferentz has got to take the shackles off in order for this to work. When you hire a quarterback coach to be your offensive coordinator, and I mean, Iowa last year, dreadful would be kind to how, how awful they were on offense. I would have to think Tim was like, look, if I'm even going to interview, you got to tell me X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. That's what I would have done. And if parents didn't like it, I'd have said goodbye. Who cares? Because there's just other jobs that are more fun. Like I'm not running the ball on third and six. You know right. what I mean? Like it's just, they have to be more creative. And he's been a head coach in the Mac, et cetera. So he's had his hands on offensive and defensive game planning for a long time. But he's a quarterback guy. He played quarterback and he's coached it. I think they're going to have to throw it some more. Now, I know they're not like loaded like Ohio State or Michigan or Florida of old at, at receiver, but I want to see some come out on first and 10. Is Iowa in a three wide set? Mm -hmm. Check boxes. This will tell me before any play call if Kirk is like, no, we're doing this. Because if he's doing like that, this guy will be here one year. Yeah. If like they move things around and then that'll probably be it for, for a certain guy that's been in Iowa City a long time too, because the fans want to see the ball in the air. You know, I know that's the topic in, in everything. And it also changes your recruiting. They're not going to get anybody until they start throwing it. It's just simple as that. They're not coming. So, like, it's made fun of. Even in Florida, like, Iowa is made fun of. Yeah. In it's, Florida. Come on, man. That's It's bad. become a national punchline. It really has. And the frustrating aspect, you know, when you kind of look at it here on the local front is, yeah, they are winning games. And it's not pretty. And it's not fun. Look, I, I've been a season ticket holder since I was a sophomore in high school. I've been – going to games now for going on 30 years. And it's frustrating to watch. It's not a fun brand of basketball to uh, football to be able to watch there. It's not basketball and grass like Purdue did back in the day. But if you're winning, it can be palpable. But that winning very well could dry up, and it could happen quickly. I mean, you think of the number of coin flip games that have gone Iowa way oh, my goodness. in the last three years. And over time, those things tend to even out. And 
you go back to their last huge victory when they beat Penn State a couple of years ago. Uh, they had the lead in that game late, and they were willing just to kneel the ball and knowing that they were going to have to give it back to Penn State because they believed, believed in their defense that much. Now, they're also doing that against a backup quarterback from Penn State in that game as Clifford was injured in it. So those kind of things are just not sustainable. And the crazy thing is we're not asking this offense to suddenly become a top 25 offense nationally in yards per game, yards per play, those kind of things. Just be okay. Tim Lester, if the reins are off, does he have the requisite skill set? Can he do that with an offensive line that should be pretty good, a running back room that is loaded, Cade McNamara coming off injury again, but at the quarterback position, is that enough to, at minimum, make this a top 70 offense next season? If it's not, something's wrong. McNamara, I think, is the key. He can extend plays. He'll get you a third down and four where he makes two guys miss. Nobody's open because Iowa's receivers aren't, you know, I'm not getting drafted here. <laughs> make something happen and get a first down. They should be able to extend plays. They just need one or two plays more a game, Trent, where it's, okay, the scheme got us this first down. That's not a big ask. Yeah, It's not because their running game, like their zone – is as good as anybody's historically. And they've changed it up. Everybody adapted to it. They still have principles with it. They'll run some gap and some other things. How about a bootleg? How about a waggle? How about an RPO? How about a jet sweep that's not telegraphed from 10 miles away? Things like this tend to work out for everybody else. Now it's time Iowa did that too. Again, does the head coach allow it in critical moments against big time teams? If you resort to the mean, you will get beat and beat handily. That's it. I mean, there's there's no way around. They're, they're as fundamentally coached well as probably any team in the country, but it's about play calling to get over that hump because they're not just going to go out there and roll the ball out like Georgia does and smoke people. So you got to be out out coach guys in critical moments, and part of that's got to take some risk. Another place I want to go with you is you know people are wondering, what Iowa had done until the last couple of years, because the last two years when they played somebody really good, they've gotten blown out. That wasn't the case before where Iowa, they'd hang around in a game and then they pull an upset and they'd hang around against Michigan and beat the number two ranked team in the country. And they do it against Penn state. They do it against Ohio state. And, and they'd be able to find ways to win these games because teams would hang around and they would make a mistake. The last two years, those mistakes have completely gone away. It's not that the Iowa defense is different. It's still elite but they're not forcing turnovers at the same level. And my theory is, Brian, it's because every coaching staff now going into playing Iowa know that they're so impotent offensively, we don't have to take a chance. We don't have to take that shot on third and 11. We don't have to go down the field and get an interception. All of a sudden, they got a short field. And all of a sudden, we look up and we're down 10 nothing. How the hell did that happen? They don't have to worry about that anymore because of the issues offensively. Do you think I'm onto something here? Well, let's look at the games in the Big Ten amongst the four best teams, Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, and Iowa. Whoever had the worst offense, the team they were going against, it was always Iowa when they were playing it, let's just be honest, the other team would dumb down their offense that week. Yeah. I mean, they even know Ohio State, like yeah. Yeah. Ohio State, down, they're still throwing at some, but it was more conservative. How many mm -hmm. times did they throw in the middle of a field against Iowa? You know what I mean? Like, right. they don't have to. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we run the screen and we got a punt, who cares? They're not going 80 yards. Kick it in the end zone. I don't care. They'll mm -hmm. get one or two first downs and they'll punt it back to us. And that's what happened. Yeah. So you have to strike fear into the other team. So part of their game planning is the following. We know we can't win unless we hit some big shots. Mm -hmm. When was the last time somebody said that going against Iowa? 20 years ago? <laughs> We're not quite that long, but it feels like that. It, it, it does. does. It, it yeah. does feel that way. Because you know, Amir Smith Marset, he could make some plays. He was a big play receiver that they had, and he's yeah. now bounced around in the NFL. No, they've had those guys. They've done it with the tight end position when they had Noah oh, yeah, and that's fine. Hawkinson. And, and that's that's still the basis of what they're going to be. You're not going to completely go away from the tight end because who do you recruit? Who can you get? Talented tight ends. You're not going to go away from that, but on the outside. Caleb Brown, they got him from Ohio State a year ago after a season with the Buckeyes. He really came on at the end of the season, and hope is he can be that big play receiver. Is he going to catch, though, 30 balls? Or can he catch 60 balls? And that's going to be a big component. You mentioned RPO. I want to talk to you a little bit about that. And then we're going to get into the recruiting side of things. We're talking with Brian Smith, talking football, talking recruiting here. It's presented by LinkedIn. We'll get into it a little bit more as we continue. Locked on Hawkeyes.
Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Back with you once again here on the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Joined today by Brian Smith, our recruiting analyst with Locked On. You can find him on Twitter at FBScout underscore Florida. Uh, Brian, RPO. It's a magic word here in Iowa as we're getting excited about the potential of a, a little bit more. I go back, and what always jumps to mind is 2019 Minnesota. When P.J. Fleck had that thing running, they get off to the 10-0 record. Of course, they lost in Iowa City because that's what P.J. Fleck normally does. But they were running that RPO system. With Tanner Morgan, not an overly mobile quarterback, a guy that can move a little bit, but he had two good receivers, and they were able to do that thing, just slant route after slant route. Edge guy comes down, crashing down, we're going to run the football. If he doesn't, we're going to throw that slant. I mean, that's the most simple version, and it worked incredibly well for them. With what Iowa does, what they do with the zone blocking scheme, how much can that be and should be a part of Iowa's offense? If you've got the personnel, you use it. Caleb Brown's probably the most important player on the roster next year because he's, like, I know him, super athlete. Like, I thought he was a top 50 kid conservatively coming out of high school. If he's going to figure it out with Iowa and they, you know, they figure it out in terms of, okay, we're actually going to let him throw it around, mm -hmm. jet sweeps. Uh, reverses, he'll make a guy miss in a phone booth, and he's a strong kid. He's built like a box. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's put together. Those kind of guys, then you get your tight end out in the flat. You play action, one second block, then he kicks it out there to that flat, he's wide open, and then you got a 245-pound guy rumbling down the field. Nobody wants to tackle. It's not complex. <laughs> it's really not. I don't know why more teams don't do some of that stuff on first and 10. They, they just grind it out a lot, but I think Iowa would be good with that with the running backs, too. They can use a running back in the backfield, have a second running back in the game that's in the slot and run motion. A million ways you can do some of these play fakes. Why would you not? They, they've got some personnel. And Cade, being a veteran quarterback, probably going to be a little easier to call those plays because he understands, okay, I need to do X here. I need to do Y there. You know, Ferentz and, and the whole staff will have more confidence in that. Going to be uh, interesting to see. Now, spring football coming up in about a month. It'll start. We'll get one glimpse at them in the spring game or the spring scrimmage is actually what it is. But it'll probably be clunky at that time. Cade McNamara will not be back running things at 100% at that point. But that's also the part of implementing a new system, right? I mean, for Hawkeye fans that are out there and expecting all of a sudden we're going to see them in late April for the first time and this thing's going to look perfect and look going to look good. You're talking about a, a pretty big turnover of what they potentially can do now under Lester. The first spring, I don't care what the system is, it's not fun. Yeah. I don't know how much access the coaching staff gives you guys, but it wouldn't matter. Okay. okay. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? And this is another reason I have zero interest in Iowa. I, I won't cover a team that does that. I won't. So I wouldn't have covered Michigan because he didn't allow anything. He, he was the worst. So the whole point is still the same. Do you have the ability to, to make it in the long run? You got to go through the grind in the spring which, you know, Kirk's been great at. They, they've had young teams before, new new coordinators, et cetera. If they can get through spring and at least get the receiver, like Brown, again, is very key. Mm -hmm. Him and McNamara got to continue where they, they finished at, and they need somebody else to be a complimentary piece. When you get to the point you got two receivers that the other team has to think about on third and six, okay, where's Johnny and where's Timmy? You know, we it's, if it's just one guy, you can double him. Mm -hmm. you got to have that second option. Maybe it's tight end for him. Iowa always has at least four of those guys, it seems like, running around. But if you can get to the point where they're outside, then the RPO game really goes because you're stretching teams horizontally. You can't beat Georgia in the box. That's what I always tell everybody. We're like, you win a couple of plays, but on third and one, I'm betting on the team from Athens, Georgia. Mm -hmm. You play Ohio State, et cetera. you got to be able to win outside the box. You have to because they're going to have more guys than you do right there in the middle. So this is an important spring for Iowa. Look at the basics. Don't get overwhelmed if they throw some incompletions. Imagine that in the spring game or whatever it's called. 
how does the quarterback look with the receivers? That would be the only thing I'd look at. Does it look comfortable? Is mm-hmm. there some timing? If not, then I'd be a little concerned because they've been throwing, you know, just probably about every day that they can this offseason. So it's at least fun. Yeah. Last year they didn't want to talk about the passing game because there wasn't any. So, you know, this this is an uptick. Look at it that way. All right, before we let you go, Brian, uh, just a couple minutes left with you. Want to get into at least a couple of the guys for the class of 2025. Our conversations brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. And I uh, want to start first with the guy that I think most people anticipated talking about the tight end position was going to be a Hawkeye. From up in my neck of the woods where I grew up, grew up, up in Clear Lake, Thomas Meyer, a tight end, had some big time offers from across the country. You had the standard Midwest teams that were involved, of course, K-State, Iowa State, Kansas, Missouri, you know, all teams like that. But there were some national uh, programs after him as well. Can run a great basketball player, obviously a great football player. He just, he fits the mold of, all right, they already got it figured out for the next four years, right, at the tight end position with Meyer. This is a kid that will start as a sophomore at Iowa. That would be my guess. Yeah. And if he's not, that just means they have another guy that kind of developed out of the blue and he's the second string guy. Either way, it works out for Hawkeye fans. Look, I don't know what is in the water in that state, but they always have a 6'5 guy they can catch. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the way that state works. No different this year. There's probably one in the 26 class that I don't even know about. That's kind of how it is. Yep. Um, if I would didn't get this kind of kid, it would be a really big problem. Because, again, even going to RPO and all that, nothing wrong with dumping it to the tight end of the flat and letting him run over somebody and it's first and ten. That's that's something that's a part of that as well, and it's a part of your run game. You need these kind of guys because you're not going to just flat out out recruit Michigan, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Texas, LSU at receiver. You're not. So you got to be able to do some of these things with the tight end position. And now this kid's really athletic, like you said. They'll use him as a flex. I don't care what he's called, but on third and seven, he can take it away from a defensive back in a 50-50 situation. Who cares what if he's if he's receiver or tight end? That's a really important kid, and you're protecting your home base. Got to have it. He uh, is a stud, and it's not very often we get to see Texas A&M, Stanford, Miami coming in and offering kids from North Exactly. Island, but exactly. That, that shows you the kind of talent that Thomas Meyer has. All right, one more for you. It's the quarterback for the class of 2025. I've heard varied opinions about the kid from Indiana, Jimmy Sullivan, kind of all over the place. Now, he committed before the, obviously, change of the new coordinator coming in. We'll see. Tim Lester will probably get his eyes on him and see if he's a guy that makes sense for what he wants to do. But had some good offers again. Michigan State, Illinois, Minnesota uh, also in on him. Tell us a little bit, if anything, that you know about class of 2025 quarterback Jimmy Sullivan. Well, the state of Indiana is my home base. That's where I'm originally from. But look, there's two parts to this. And I I don't want to go over the kid, but does he have the Miamis and all that kind of like the tight end does? No. Mm -hmm. Does that mean it's a bad sign? Not necessarily. You only take one quarterback in a class. I want to see him in the early part of this summer, if he goes to a camp I'm at or whatever, but especially in the fall. What are they going to work on? Because I guarantee you that the new coordinator, receiver, everybody on the staff are going to want that high school to run a little bit more of what they do. Do things a little bit more and then adjust. And if it's not right, it could be a parting of the ways way. This is how it works across football, not just Iowa. If it's not the right fit, you're done. If you don't have the right quarterback, you're done. I don't care who else you got. They they'll figure that out. Now here's the other part. Is he a good player? Yes. Illinois, like that staff, I respect immensely with their evaluations. That's a hard place to win at. And they've been pretty good recently. They offered him early. What does that tell you about him as a football player? So I, I haven't watched him, watched him just briefly, but I'll go with what they said. As far as next year though, you need to watch the first three games for his high school team. If that's matching a little bit more Iowa, that'll tell you how things are going. And maybe Iowa takes a second quarterback. They might take somebody totally different that's a run-pass guy, just mm-hmm. wide-open athlete, from some kid from middle of nowhere in Mississippi or something. Who knows? But they're, if they're going to go to RPO, they got to get kids that are more mobile to truly use it. They got that guy for this year's recruiting class, a guy from your neck of the woods now down in Florida, and James right. Rezar. He can run. Does- does he fit better now with the potentially new style oh, of yeah. offense? He does. He's got to revamp his throwing style a little bit, but man, James could flat out run. Like he's he's an athlete. And he played in Florida. And I saw Florida kids every day, mm-hmm. and he could run with any of them. So if you got a quarterback that can do that, that's a good sign. We'll see. Maybe he's the future after all. 
I think the new offense fits him like a zillion times better than the old one did. I never knew why they went after him because he wasn't the most accurate kid. But now, if you're RPO and you're running it right, somebody's wide open. That's the whole reason for the offense. You don't have to be as accurate. You know, Jackson and some of these guys in the NFL, they can be good, but there's one Patrick Mahomes. You know what I mean? Like certain guys are just more accurate than everybody else, and it is what it is. You got to be able to create more space for your receivers through the RPO game. Brian, good stuff as always. Always enjoy our conversations, talking some football with you and getting into the recruiting. Obviously, it'll ramp up a little bit more here in the uh, coming weeks and months. Iowa, their big uh, day coming up in June. But five commitments already for the class of 2025. We'll also talk about a couple of those other prospects going forward here. I will be running you down the next time. Brian, as always, appreciate your time. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. That's Brian Smith joining us. You can find him on Twitter at FBScout underscore Florida. Brian Smith, always doing great work with us here on the Lockdown Network. And a big thank you to him. And a thank you as well to LinkedIn and LinkedIn Jobs, our presenting sponsor of our recruiting profiles. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. Well, we got a little basketball game coming up this evening. We're going to talk about that as we continue Taking a look at Iowa, Indiana, the weekend ahead for Iowa Hoops. Game Saturday and Sunday. The men go to Illinois on Saturday. The women back home for the Illini on Sunday. But first day preview of Iowa, Indiana. We'll do that as we come back here. This is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel. It's America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets. They have live same-game parlays, exclusive props, a deep menu of future bets, and a whole lot more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and shoot your shot. That is FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner, of the NBA. Try kind of back with you one final time on the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast. As always, thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. Well, a big weekend ahead. We'll talk a little bit more about that one coming up this evening after we wrap things up uh, with the women's game. We'll have an instant reaction podcast that will be coming up into your feed. But a couple of news and notes. And, and first, let's talk a little bit about obviously that game and what we anticipate we are going to see. It is a matchup with Indiana. And when you talk about Indiana, you start with Mackenzie Holmes, a six foot three post player, incredibly talented. She's good around the rim. She knows how to use her body. She is kind of the embodiment of what we have seen develop at that position in college basketball, on the women's side, you know, over the last 15, 20 years, she is really, really talented knows how to work inside. And I know people look back at the last time that Indiana went out and they got blown out by Illinois and he thought, all right, well, this thing's going to be a pushover. With Mackenzie Holmes, 20 points per game, seven rebounds. She scored 20 points or more in 16 games this year. She's really good. But it's what happens around her. And, and with that, what's going to happen the way that they're shooting the basketball? Because if you're collapsing down on Holmes and you anticipate that's going to be the case when Iowa does that, they're going to be collapsing on her. They're going to bring extra help. They're not going to leave Hannah Stulke alone on an island. When that happens, well, that's going to lead to open shooting. The first time these two teams played, going back to the game earlier this season when Iowa on Fox on wildcard weekend got that victory, they didn't shoot the ball very well. Indiana did not. Uh, Scalia, she was 0 for 4. She has had three or more three-pointers in 16 games this season. She was 0 for 4 in that one. As a whole, Indiana shot five of 20. Now they're back in their home gym. And I didn't like the way that the loss went. I mean, losing by 20 to Illinois in its own right is bad, but now you got an angry team. And now how does Iowa respond? I, I think that's a big question too. The week away, I think was a great thing overall for this team. They needed that. They needed the time away. They needed the ability to reset themselves, right? After the breaking of the record by Caitlin Clark, all the lead up to it, all the build up, all of the, just conversations that were had about that scoring record, what happened against Nebraska in the fourth quarter, all these different things. You flush it, you move on, and then you get this week to reset themselves. 
but is it going to take a little bit longer for them to get going? As we saw early in the games has not been a problem for Iowa. In fact, you look at all three losses this season. They played well early in all of those games. It's been the fourth quarter that has been the issue overall. That is something to keep an eye on here. Indiana as a whole, right now, shooting 41% from three. That's tops. Tops in the country. They're really good. Defensively, they're okay. Not as good of a defensive team as maybe you'd think with a good post player. That's not the case there. Indiana doesn't shoot a ton of threes, but when they do, they knock them down because usually they are open. Point spread right now has an Iowa favored by four and a half. I would lead Indiana. I just, I have a sneaking suspicion. As well as Iowa has played lately against Indiana, and they've won five to the last six, as well as they have played, that just has that feeling that Iowa might be in some trouble tonight. Hope I'm dead wrong. We will see, and we will be back with you with an instant reaction. We also take a look, a deeper look at Iowa men's basketball as they sit on the NCAA bubble. We will break things down, go a little bit deeper. A lot of great comments as well over on YouTube. A lot of good things from some of the commenters over there and some good information that we're going to bring to the podcast for Friday. Talk Iowa baseball. They have a huge weekend. Maybe their biggest weekend of the year comes in the second weekend of the year. Auburn, Wichita State, couple of big opportunities, three big opportunities, in fact, in uh, their three games that they're going to be playing coming up this weekend. Big opportunities can get some big wins, solidify, solidifying themselves as a top 25 team this season. This is going to be an important week. Of course, it'll be Brody Brett getting the ball in game one, followed up by Marcus Morgan in game two and Wes Obermuller against Wichita in game three. We'll dive into that a little bit deeper. The Iowa wrestling team with their final duel of the season, a little bit on that. It'll be a busy show. And we got you covered as we do your team every day here on the Lockdown Network. Thanks to Brian for joining us as always. Thanks to you for being out there and listening. If you got a moment, make sure you hit that subscribe button once again over on YouTube. Greatly helps us if you're on the podcast side. Four star, five star review. What are four star? Five star review. Come on, help me out. Five star review over there and get us hooked up there. And don't forget our partnership right now with SiriusXM, letting you know that all the Iowa broadcasts are available on the SiriusXM app, you can find baseball, basketball, wrestling. We got you covered over there. Catch the Hawkeyes games on SiriusXM and the SiriusXM app. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Hawks.